Hey everyone, this is Spoonie with a special guest here in the studio. I got Bennett the Sage, the uh, the person responsible for this nightmare of an anime review. Uh, you, you can't say just, I'm not solely responsible for this. The uh, I believe the director had a hand in this a little bit. <laughs> so uh, you wanted to talk initially about this opening sketch at first, where you look like a fucking demon. <laughs> that I think uh, I wanted to expand a little bit on my traditional... Uh, way I make reviews and stuff like this. I, I felt like I, I could do something that's... I don't know, I guess I had a... Like, I could write dialogue, I could write character, you know, you know response and the interaction. And, and I felt that this was... actually worked out better in the looking at all everything. It worked out even better than when I pictured it in my head. This looks pretty good, actually. Um, I I actually hate shooting in hotel rooms for the most part because the lighting is so poor. Luckily, though, uh, Ed Glazer, the G-Laser, was around, and he actually he comes prepared for this, man. He uh, He's a great cameraman, and he brought reflectors and his own light sources. He is a, he is a savior on the movie set, or on the film set. And if, right here, you can see uh, Spoonie's epic Juno shadow. It is... Uh, <laughs> You pointed this out, how my my gigantic Junos cast... It's, it's uh, like the longest shadow, like longer than it has any right to cast. Uh, you, man, you can see that thing, it's massive. It's like the, it's like the shadow cast from the Tower of, uh, of Minas Morgul. It is, yeah, like on a hot day, just get behind uh, Spoonie's nose and you will... <laughs> And you will feel the cool breeze. Uh, this is a joke that may have gone some over some people's head, especially if you never sp saw Space Thunder Kids, the uh, the return of Lars the Professional the ass. ass Wiper. I like that gag so much, and apparently Ed liked it so much that when I told him that he might make a return, he volunteered to get a bellhop outfit, so that way he didn't have to you know bop around in his you know shirts and jeans like he did last year, which. Uh, well, on one hand, it does look better as far as profession, profession is concerned, but there's this sort of charm to having him just be in the shirts and jeans. Oh, I, I have to interrupt. This is the first really good look you see at my, uh, my epic wang jacket, which you actually very, were very specific in wanting to showcase here. Yeah, I, uh, that was a very cool looking jacket. Uh, it is an awesome jacket. Yeah. Uh, a fan donated, <laughs> my, my face lights up with joy. <laughs> and, uh, we're not hearing the music, but I love the musical cues. I just love how they just correspond with the imagery so well. And I, it was just serendipity is all you it could call it. Took me 20 minutes to take a shit. Well, he's very thorough. Oh, I see. It's not the dump so much that takes so long. It's his well, thoroughness mm -hmm. and the wipe. <laughs> anyway, the last thing I'll say on the Wang jacket is it's the jacket from Big Trouble in Little China that Wang wears. And uh, a fan actually went out of his way to get that custom made for me. It's the, really the greatest gift I've ever been given. So thank you again. <laughs> All right. uh, the, when I was talking about like anime in general, the uh, schlock obas that really permeated the anime market in the uh, mid to late 90s, in parts of early 90s, uh, a few of them stood out in my head immediately, and one of them was Angel Cut here, where every line of dialogue out of this woman's mouth is a curse word. It's sort of manga entertainment's little... Uh, Mad Bull. <laughs> Mad Bull 34, that's another one. But Oh! 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 oh yeah. Okay, he was dead after the first one. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, before I continue on, I got a lot of hate mail for putting... Uh, uh, you Cyber City Oedo 808 Mario, 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 in Mario, lumping it in with Mad Bull 34 Mario, and Angel Cop here. So I'm not saying that uh, Cyber City Oedo is bad. I'm just saying that line was hilariously awful. But anyway, uh, Manga Entertainment did a lot of uh, adult, uh, adult animation dubbing. And to them, that meant a lot of curse words. So it, it is, it's almost comical. It's, it, it's so hilarious just to hear them just talk like an everyday people and it's just f-bomb after f-bomb after f-bomb it's like talking with sam kinnison after he's had like five white lines i may never forgive you for making me watch this movie we we got we all got together pretty much everyone who was at the donation drive we got roped into this screen and ed glazer brought his dvd player and we watched this uh, and uh, actually, a number of us tapped out. I think uh, I think Linkara had to leave, and Cinema Snob decided he was gonna. He just said, "Fuck this! I'm going to the hot tub." And uh, Joe fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep one time, but it, you wouldn't let me sleep. You're like, "Wake up! You gotta watch this shit." I'm like, oh, fuck. 
like if you're going to review it, I think it's only fair to it that you actually see it before you actually speak on it. I know you didn't write it, but come on, I have some semblance of professionalism. You, you have a gift for writing in my own angry voice, my, my threatening to murder people by dunking their head and lie. I thought that was inspired. Well, it's, uh, and when you just watch Fight Club, it just these ideas pop out at you. But I, when I write for other people, I try my very hardest to sound like how they write. So when I was doing uh, the shrine, yeah, and when I was doing Cinema Snob, uh, in the same uh, phase, I was making sure to like what would you know. What would okay, Cinema is that a goose or is that a duck? I think it's a swan. I don't know. I just I said it was a goose. It was a Technicolor goose. It looks on like a goose. goose, but like. You think we're kidding. We're not kidding. That just happens. And it's never touched on ever again throughout the entire series. What, follows what, what I like is how this, this happens. He's dropped in this fantasy world. And everyone who sees him in this other world immediately identifies it as Garzy's wing. They go like, look, there. What is it? It's Garzy's wing. And, oh. And, like, I'm... I'm First off, you know who the fuck is Garzi and what's his wing? But they just—they instantly. They, apparently, this is a well-known legend. Well-known legend that has been passed on. Those two women never appear again for the rest of the film. They got two lines each. That's it. Who could that be? Do you think he might be Garzi? Something like that. Uh, that's unfair to the show, though. I did a sudden cut from the women talking to him just floating in. So it wasn't that jarring, like... If anything, you made this make more sense, because you skipped to the parts that were actually somewhat easier to follow. <laughs> I still love this. I write uh, specific instances in my review where I can showcase your overacting. I can't get enough of your exaggerated expressions. And, like, <laughs> I like how he has no wiener. It's like one of those things you don't want to look, but you kind of have to. Like li He's literally a eunuch from... Like, he's got a mangina. <laughs> A mangina. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, yeah. the shading. Ah. <laughs> and why are you? Why are you suddenly modest now? When someone draws it. There's nothing to hide. <laughs> no. And actually, my friend who was help who helped me write this a little bit has told me, "Don't do the fucking Ghostbusters line. Just do like the Wayne's World little like this man has no penis title." Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, "Nah, the Ghostbusters just fits better." And uh, he, he still has not forgiven me for that. I lost my train of thought just now. Oh, God, yeah, that, that's what Garza's wing does to you. And this is, uh, this is the part where all of a sudden it jumps right back to him in the real world, like the real world, real world Chris. Yeah, this is where it really loses me here. I guess it loses me immediately, but... Then all of a sudden they have this parallel plot where he still continues to function in the real world, which <laughs> immediately when that happens, you're like, okay, you're not playing fair. You know, is he is he in the other world or is he not? Did you actually cut the scene where uh, they rub the, the, oh, they yeah. rub the arrows on the I, I rubbed, I, ru I cut that scene because on, uh, there's this deleted scene where, uh, there's a scene where Chris puts an arrowhead on the back of the pixie's wings because it's oily, she says. Yeah, she's like, she's like, it's a little known fact that the that the skin of pixie secretes an, a, a poisonous residue and it, it gathers between our wings. And so she like takes her top off and turns around and there's this really strangely, I won't even call it erotic, it's just gross. It's just gross. It's this gross scene where he just rubs an arrowhead on the back of her wings. And I, just, I had Spoony just kind of scream out, ah, ah, why is this turning me on? It did so to not turn me on. It, it, uh. it didn't, but uh, I, I looked at it and it just didn't fit. It just felt like too lumped in. And I hate to cut it, it was funny, but I just couldn't make it fit. I, I probably would have left it in just because that is such strange imagery. It really is one of those scenes where you're like, are they really going here? Oh my god, they, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh bruises all over my body because I had to fight naked. <laughs> I wanted to include this entire scene here because every line of dialogue between the two Chris's is golden, but it was running too long, so I had to make that little sudden cut right there. I just, I, I liked how he starts to cheat, basically. Like, he starts talking to himself in the other world. And he's like, we're getting attacked. And he's like, I know what you can do. You make gunpowder. So he teaches them how to make gunpowder, which they do immediately, of course. 
And uh, I, I, I can't believe he didn't start and just like teach him to build other things. Like, here's how you build the cotton gin. You know, and so like, I, 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 electric slide. <laughs> and uh, it's actually kind of unfair because he teaches him how to, later in the show, they say like, build a gun. They never build a gun. Yeah, it, he actually, there's there's some footage you, you left out uh, where he starts building like schematics. <laughs> he, he starts making drawings of how to build rudimentary like flintlock blunderbusses or whatever. No, no, I did put it in where he's drawing in the oh, okay. sand where he... Oh, yeah, and I got a lot of hate for not putting the I have the power at that scene. Oh, the, the, I, I was so hoping in the script you would have this scene written out where... You put the DVD in, and you're like, watch this, watch this. No, 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 it's, it's the menu, but watch this. You know you're in trouble the instant you put the DVD in, because mm -hmm. this is what happens the moment you put the DVD in. The menu pops up, it says Garzy's Wing, but the first noise you hear is, Oh! And like... <laughs> you think I'm kidding. It's in me, oh! I kind of I met you halfway because the last bumper joke is that sound. Yeah. In the conjunction of the that's, show. That's that's the noise. If you if you watch the bumper at the end of this, that noise, they they put that whole scream as the first. There's there's no previews. There's no studio logo or anything. There may be, but yeah, yeah. but I don't remember it because the only thing I remember is as soon as that menu kicked in. Just, oh, <laughs> it's oh, Gabba Juju. The drag rolls of Gabba Juju. The drag rolls of Gabba Juju. And uh, you, if you saw the bloopers, you know this, but when Spoonie first delivered this line, the Nix the Flock said, uh, Gabba Lava Chuck Fuck, got everyone behind the camera to crack up. I was pissed. I was a little pissed at that because I had that really insane line and I nailed it. First take! <laughs> and then the, the peanut gallery started laughing. <laughs> It's uh, it's a funny line. I, I defy you to, to recite that line first try. <laughs> the this is uh, this was the hardest part to talk about of the, the the exact show was that these periods of long drawn out completely unnecessary like expository dialogue is like oh the legend has a meaning that's why I did it ah. yeah there's a lot of these scenes that really have nothing to do with anything like. Not just the not just the gun scene, which you could justify by saying, "Oh, they're arming up, they're getting weapons." We never see these weapons, but whatever. But there's a lot of scenes where he's just kind of hanging out with these girls in the back of the wagon and talking about, I don't even know what. He's like, he's like, he's like, boy, the weather's nice, don't you think? And they're like, yes, it is, Carsey's wing. And he's like, well, bye, and he leaves. And you're like, what the fuck was the point of that? Or the scene where he goes to the pool in the modern world mm -hmm. and he just kind of hangs out for a while he just hangs out and, and of course you do get the golden line well you certainly got sexy <laughs> which I use there he is he's a there, wait there it is and really if I, I, I've seen sexier girls I mean if she got sex if that got sexy I'd hate to see what she I'd hit before. that I know you hit now but yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking about before it's like Meg Griffin there you know? really should get your dragon's emissions checked. So, uh, yeah, this uh, anime pretty much sucks. Oh, there he there is. There he is. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Fucking dive bombs on Hydra. And I told Noah, it's like, you're going to have to imitate this guy's voice for a gag. It's like, what's he sound like? He sounds like Kermit the Frog. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very Kermity, but this guy is never explained. Really. They just, he just shows, he's like some kind of mercenary. And that's really all that's ever given is that he just shows up and starts killing people. <laughs> and he's ten feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> he, he kind of gone off onto a tangent there and where he went to Ed Sullivan. And... We're going to fight for Garzy's wing. This is the one moment when I was first watching the uh, show where I was just cracked up laughing. I was beside myself. There's this one take where uh, the king here, right, this is the scene. Where oh, the he's like, we gotta get to work. He's like, what? But they want to do it. Okay. Yeah, he's like, he's like, you guys need to work harder. Okay. <laughs> I uh, I had to pause the DVD. I couldn't breathe. That was like the worst take for any one line I've heard in the dub. Just didn't follow it whatsoever. But unfortunately, that was the last of the golden scenes as far as the actual show is concerned. Another thing that really hurts this this anime is not just the voice acting, but the, the respect that no voice actor could save this dialogue. It's so literally translated that there's there's it 
nobody talks this way. You know, it's it's it, it's almost like you pasted the Japanese script into Babelfish, and this is the result you got. Well, no, 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 no. They got the correct grammar, sort of, but they got better. <laughs> that fucking pixie. I hate her so fucking much. I can't even think straight whenever I see her on screen. It's so fucking. T- That's part of the reason I never watch. I I, I kind of got turned off of the Berserk manga. I was I was just talking to you before about how uh, I wanted to read the Berserk manga, but apparently in that in the manga there's a fairy that follows guts around. Oh yeah, puck. Is is that fairy annoying as well? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it bad? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not as bad as uh, fucking her, but pretty bad. Pretty bad. Oh god. Oh my god! I have to stay out of sight. But I will be brave this time. Don't you see? Fucking God. And Fuck that pixie. And when I was writing the scene, well, I was I knew I had to have uh, Spoonie say something about right here, and I realized, holy crap, I'm watching soldiers on armored velociraptors fight, you know, you know, in these medieval fight scenes. Why am I not interested in this at all? And I'm just like, they've done it. They made the fantastical, you know, just ridiculous boring well here's the other thing is they they build this guy up as being garzi's wing this this guy who's like this legendary hero who's going to help them but he never really does like he gives them gunpowder which is really the greatest contribution he ever makes which has nothing to do with his legendary powers in fact it's a major subplot in this story where he can't actually summon garzi's wing to help him fly around and fight for like he does at the beginning of the movie and he does it very briefly at the second, like at, during the second fight of the movie, and then he never manages to do it ever again until the very, 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 very end of the fight where he he fights the main bad guy, and uh, never really touched on again. And uh, this is where you kind of ejected yourself from the review. <laughs> I was actually legitimately pissed when I saw this. I was. I wanted her to die. I really did. Wasn't it Cinema Snob who thought that they were really gonna rape her? <laughs> Brad, kind of, Brad goes there a lot. Uh, he was like, I don't know the physics of that, but I don't think it would work. And I'm like, you haven't seen much anime, have you? And fucking. This is. Uh, I was so proud of you for this performance. Thank right you. I, I actually got compliments on my acting, which should never happen, really. Um, and then the Ed just kind of crubs in here. and The sounds you made, I think this scene wouldn't have worked except for this end part where I'm just kind of waiting for you to get calmed down. That's what I like to write in my reviews. Just if I can, if I can rely on a visual gag more than a written gag... I'll go for it. You know what this is right here? This is the, uh, why I will never be able to run for public office. (laughs) Because you're associated with Garzy's No, because, um, my political opponent will do a Google search on me, and this is the shit that'll come up. (laughs) So at the debate, the guy will be like, do you really want this guy representing you for Senate? And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, there's a scene where he goes and gets his ass wiped by another man and makes please, uh, oh, sound. (laughs) Or, or rapes, or, 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 or systematically rapes a number of people in his own bed and tapes it. You know, it's it's going to be great stuff. By the way, I was, not, uh, I was not joking when I said I literally forgot that's what he could do. Fly? Where he could fly by his ankles. And it's like, there was just so much to talk about as far as just being so incomprehensible that I forgot that that was like a major plot point to that entire thing. Well, that's, that's, that's what I was talking about was at, beyond the first like 10 minutes of the film, he never uses Garcy's wing. You, you forget about it because he never does it. <laughs> he does it once, and you Anyways, and for so twice, he fights with a broken sword handle. And is that the power of Garzi's wing? You just fly around and, you know, kind of like Peter Pan, and you just use a broken sword handle? That's it? As far as I can tell, it really just conveys the power of flight. That's about it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and that wasn't clear, but that was one of the... That shot right there, that's the general's head on a pike. And now he has Garzi's... What the fuck? Yeah, Garzi's wing in the real world, or at least our world, and on a motorcycle, and he's flying to the great Gabaju tree, I think. Okay, so you got you actually got a fair amount of controversy over this on your comment section by saying this is one of the worst animes of all time, because apparently every... Anime, Everyone has their own opinion Every about serious it. anime fan can name something worse. Do you do, do you still stand by that, or do you... I, I, I'll be the first to admit I have not seen every anime out there, but I will say that as far as basic storytelling is concerned, as far as basic character concept and all that jazz, Garzy's Wing fails on almost every level. 
from a technical standpoint and storytelling standpoint, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, there are probably worse animes in terms of just sheer offensiveness and wrongness. And I'm thinking mainly hentai. I know, but you can't really lump them both in. No, uh, I mean, that's why I'm always... I, I, I never like to answer the question, what's the best movie you've ever seen, what's the worst movie you've ever seen, because... There's so many categories. There's, there's, there's a lot of subcategories. I tend to waffle on that a lot of... of they're worse in different ways. You know, like, it, honestly, you know, I hate to keep going back to Highlander the Source, but that one offends me. That I, That's one of the worst movies I ever saw, just because it offends me so much. The Green Hornet offends me, and I haven't even seen it because it's ruined Mythbusters for all time. It's the worst Mythbusters episode I've ever fucking seen. Anyway, Adam, you're okay. <laughs> Every time you get onto the Highland of the Source, and you... I know, I just, I'll never shut up. You'll never shut up about that fucking movie. Anyway, last words about the donation drive? Last words, uh, thank you so much for turning it into a success, people. You guys rock. I made that thank you message for a reason. Yeah, no kidding. It was it was really stunning to see such... I was really shocked at the amount of generosity. Uh, the, the donation drive was really something where uh, we were actually... We couldn't even get to videos because there were so many people giving so much that we were on the phone the entire time talking to these people. And that's the kind of problems you want to have where you've got too many people giving... No, too many. Money, you know, and like that. Trust me, I will take that any day over showing my stupid videos. You can see those anytime, but that that level of generosity, that that really helped a lot of kids, and that was amazing. That see. was it's uh, kind of frustrating at the time when you couldn't, when there was a lot of people phoning in and who wanted to talk to us. I can see how that can be a kind of a problem, but when you think about why we couldn't take, you know, why we couldn't get to videos or why we couldn't take call-ins, all these people donating the money, it just seems, you know, kind of. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. It just kind of... It just doesn't matter. No, it, it didn't matter. Not to I mean, me. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter like that the, the our videos aren't being shown. We're, a lot of people are donating a lot of money is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, we are well past out of time. Any last words on Garzy's Wing before we go? It's a, it's a horrible piece of shit, but Actually, for the first time, it's funny. Let me ask you this then. Uh, if you're going to go back to anime reviews, what's next? Oh, uh, maybe Mad Bull 34, just, Mad be Bull? Mad, just because it's so funny and it gets so off kilter towards the end. What about MD Guys? Do you ever... Oh, uh, MD Guys? That's the one, that's, everyone goes to that as the worst anime. I might do it just because, you know, it's sort of like... Public the, consensus? Public consensus. It's like the E.T., like the video game of anime. Like, everyone points to that as the worst thing to ever happen to Well, I'll, I'll open it up to, to suggestions, because like I said, every anime fan has their own pick for the worst, and I'm sure there are a ton of obscure turds out there that oh, we could God. look into. Like, I hadn't even heard of Space Thunder Kids <laughs> okay. until you showed that piece of shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> you still think that hurts worse than... Uh, Space no. Thunder Kids hurts worse because it was way more boring. <laughs> it was. So, to me, that... And I think, I think actually, Space Thunder Kids was a longer movie. Uh, no, it wasn't, actually. Really? Oh, no. my God. It felt... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It was barely 90 minutes. Oh, my God. I think it was only a little over 80, actually. <sighs> Anyway, uh, we're going to go. Thanks, Bennett, for showing up, and thanks for uh, contributing to this commentary. I think my last word is... Oh! <laughs> Bye. <laughs>